My name is DK Sale. I run the salvage uh, page, uh, investigating the Steve Avery and, uh, and Brendan Dassey cases, um, as well as being involved in a couple other cases myself and uh, not quite uh, losing any of them yet, although I'm very lucky. Um, and I have no official capacity here. Actually, I only got involved because I spotted uh, Michael Griesbeck's uh, book, uh, and uh, Innocent Killer, and I just, uh, I just, it blew me away because of the, the, uh, the false facts that were included in that book. And, and I'll talk about that another time. But once I got into this thing a little bit, I want to tell you what I think about the uh, uh, Stephen Avery. I think that that he absolutely deserves another trial. And I'm completely appalled at the, the, the at the treatment of, of Brendan Dassey, as we all are. It's heartbreaking, but it's also just outrageous, you know. And I think that they need to 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 do an investigation into the people that did that. I just I, that's my own opinion. Uh, but going back to why I think that Stephen Avery deserves trial, and this is the one reason is that it's because of the the the, the Rav Four blood. I do not believe that the state of Wisconsin sent the blood from the Rav Four for the EDTA uh, test. I don't think it's possible for them to have sent it. Uh, I do not, uh, you know, in, in considering this, uh, I don't think they would have taken the risk. Just bear with me a second. Consider what would have happened if uh, that EDTA test had come back positive. Consider that. I mean, just imagine the enormity if uh, if they got the test that was positive, meaning that somebody went into the storage locker, got that vial, opened it up, and threw it on the, on the van, took a Q-tip, and did that thing that we've seen, you know, and that, and that would have proved that. That would have made it. Imagine the enormity. That would have made that thirty-six million dollars of puny. I mean, they would have had this to basically hand the state of Wisconsin over to Avery. I'm being a little facetious there because really. What would have meant it would have undermined the complete, undermined completely law enforcement and trust in law enforcement in the state of Wisconsin. It would have caused chaos among the ranks. It just would have been a complete and utter disaster. It is not a chance that any responsible attorney, uh, general, or, and and uh, or either Tom Fallon or Norm Gann would have made. They would never have sent that off for a test they did not know what the result was going to be. Now, let's look at it. How do they know? Right? How could they possibly be sure? I mean, they're, uh, that one of these guys in Manitowoc or, or, or Calumet didn't sneak in there and do this. They don't know. I don't know. Do you know? I mean, you can have all the confidence you want that your guys would never do this, but let's say there was a percentage. Let's say that they got together and talked about what are the odds of that so, well, even if they had 99%, 99 said no, you know, like 99% sure, that 1% that they're wrong, that somebody did sneak in there and do that, in their own minds, I'm saying, you know, I don't know what the percentages are, but even in their own minds, if it was just like 1%, they're not going to risk the entire state of Wisconsin to do this. It's just not going to happen. That's not, there's no way that it's a political disaster. I mean, they, they do, there's a lot of other options they have besides that one, taking that gamble. You know, uh, and when you look at it this way, it becomes very clear that they, they, they it just that they just did not send the blood from the Rav Four. Uh, you say which blood did they send, and, and and how much blood do you need like to plant? Well, you know what? Uh, they only sent three tiny little swabs to the uh, FBI. They had three tiny little swabs. You know. Why only three little swabs? You know, I mean, you, you, you wonder about this stuff. And, uh, there were seven stains in the RAV4. Why only, you know, there's seven and they said three because, you know what, they maybe only had three from the Trans Am that was sitting right next to the RAV4. And, uh, that, 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 uh, the Trans Am belonged to Stephen Avery. They knew he had a cut on his hand. They knew there was blood in that vehicle. And there was enough blood to send off to that test. Um, you know, just a little bit, of, you know, that, that, that about it is just that, you know, Teresa Hallback's vehicle was discovered. The salvage yard, you know, not to go into detail, but it was locked. You know, nobody ever saw any blood in yeah, at the yard. There was no blood seen there. In fact, the, the van was taken to the crime lab. It wasn't until the next morning when the photographer discovered the van, you know, uh, open, 
We don't know who opened it. Nobody tells us who opened the lock. But he comes in there and he takes a picture of where the blood is. And that's it. That's it. Because after that, they come in and they swab all the blood off. The man no longer has blood on it because there's not enough blood to go around. And, you know, there might have been a little in the back where there was more blood from Teresa Hallback's blood. But as far as Avery's blood, they want every little drop of that. And they were cutting it out of the carpet. They're not going to leave any there. After that, there's no more blood. All the blood is in the lab in little swabs. So you have like uh, Avery swabs here from the van, and then you have Avery swabs here from the Trans Am. You have a couple swabs uh, from the bathroom, I think. There's a little dot there. Uh, you know, so you have all you got is these little swabs here. Uh, and you think, well, you know, where I, I don't know where they all are. I can't see them. They say, well, you have to have trust. There is nothing been trustworthy at all, I mean, about this investigation. If you look at the box of bones they said they discovered, right? They don't, they don't tell you they found bones. They show you this box. There's a box. There's all these stuff in there. And none of it. They tell you where it is from. I, you, how do you know which one is from where or anything? It's just in a box. They take it. They throw it off to this, uh, the, you know, to some bone specialist or something. You know I mean? It's just that's the way they did that whole thing. They didn't take pictures. There's no... Uh, documentation of where they got the bullet from there is uh, uh, then there's the bullet all right so the bullet you know does have true if it is I don't know whose bullet it is but it's just that bullet that they presented has uh, Teresa Hall Black's DNA on it but it also has Sherry Hoyne's DNA on it I mean there's nothing in fact every single piece of evidence seems to be cross-contaminated here uh, you know there's and then there's the officers themselves you know, Pedro says that Manitowoc officers uh, are not going to be investigating. Yet they are. They have crossed. They're like mixed up. They everything here has gone from here to here and back and forth. Yeah, blood swab here and a blood swab here. And I assure you that the the, uh, the state of Wisconsin's uh, police reputation was on the line. Uh, this is going to happen. This is going to happen way before. They're going to take this chance, right, that this blood test is going to come back as positive for EDTA. That would never, ever happen. It would never happen. Uh, there is possible other thing if you want to believe that the FBI is in collusion with the state of uh, Wisconsin. Uh, I, you know, that's, you know, I would probably prefer to believe that the, uh, they, they would not do that. It would... They would leave it up to Wisconsin to be doing this rather than uh, implicating the FBI. So, uh, but there it is. I mean, there's, there, there is absolutely, uh, in my mind, there is zero possibility that the blood that was sent to the FBI to be tested for EDTA came from the RAV4. It came from a source that they were absolutely sure had no EDTA in it. Uh, it's the only way that the test would have taken place. If they, they were guaranteed the result, if they absolutely knew the outcome, otherwise they just would not have done it. And, uh, and that's what I believe. And uh, you believe what you want. Anyway, uh, thank you for coming by to salvage the page. I hope you do. We, uh, the other things we've been finding is we found a document with the, uh, um, from the police department that showed that, yes, lo and behold, uh, Stephen Avery was a homicide suspect on November 3rd. Uh, two days before they found the van, he's listed as a homicide, which you know, a uh, suspect, uh, which explains the phone call that we heard in the film, which was he says, "Is he in custody yet? Is he in custody yet?" Uh, uh, and and everybody's wondering what that's about, right? What is that about? And well, we see that we have a document now. It's on the log uh, that uh, on November third at. Uh, I think it's 18:34, which is 6:34 p.m. Uh, that's at when it goes on the official uh, broadcast, uh, you know, uh, law enforcement broadcast channel. That uh, that Stephen Avery is now a homicide suspect. There's no, not only is there no body, there's no car. There's she was uh, Teresa Hallback had been uh, only announced as a missing person two hours prior to that. Uh, we're not. I'm not sure exactly when uh, Colburn called in for the plates. It's not really clear. Uh, I would assume it's after the uh, the five o'clock when uh, Teresa Sallback was uh, considered a missing person, and she, he talked to uh, 
Uyghur or something, and then he talked about, I don't know, you know, uh, that's all kind of everything. But the one thing is very clear, that uh, Sheriff Pagel uh, lied to the people uh, on several occasions, and one of them was when he said that uh, Stephen Avery was not a suspect, when he was clearly a suspect before the, even the car was found. And, and, and so while the people were told, and the press was told he was not a suspect, internally to all the police department, he was a suspect of a homicide. They were basically telling the police officers uh, of the state of Wisconsin that he was a, uh, he was a suspect. And it, that's him. They're basically telling you that's who it is. I mean, this is, you know, uh, and, you know, when it goes over, that's somebody thinks that, right? And uh, um, somebody put that report in. Now, uh, the other part was the page that we saw that assured us that Manitowoc uh, uh, officers were not going to be involved in the, uh, uh, in the investigation, in the search. But obviously, clearly, they were. Not only they were was uh, Officer Link and Colburn involved in finding the key, but Jost, uh, Jason Jost, was the one standing by where he said he was kind of the one who found the bone in the yard when Officer Sturdivant, nar narcotics agent Sturdivant, uh, came and uh, up to where he was, and they said they found this thing that they thought was a bone, and then all of a sudden it became a bone, and I find it very suspicious that on the fourth day that all of a sudden there's a piece of bone on the ground, uh, considering that there had been a slew of dogs or up and down around there, and they didn't find the bone, but yet a narcotics agent and Jason Jost did. Uh, it's, it's kind of a miracle, I think, um, that, uh, you know, so uh, anyway, that's all I got for now.